Beatle, John Lennon is dead. He was shot a short time ago outside his Manhattan apartment building. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the most famous crimes in history. A lot of people ask me if the Black Dahlia murder still haunts me. For this video, we're discussing the most infamous, well-known or covered crimes that spawned media frenzies. We'll be omitting mass killings and terrorist attacks. What are your thoughts on these crimes today? Let us know in the comments. The Martin Luther King Jr. Assassination Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. History, unfortunately, has seen the senseless deaths of many a good and just man. Martin Luther King Jr. was one such individual, and he paid the ultimate price for his dream on April 4, 1968. The shot apparently came from an apartment building directly across the street. King's legacy needs no introduction, but the gravity behind the civil rights leader's assassination is that the world will never know what else King could have achieved had he lived a full life. The assassination may never be fully explained either, since King's family maintains to this day that his death was part of a government conspiracy and cover-up, and that the man arrested for the killing, James Earl Ray, was a patsy set up by larger figures at play. The government was very involved. The kidnapping of Patty Hearst. What happened to Patty Hearst was something out of a movie. Several, in fact, as this granddaughter of William Randolph Hearst actually had her story dramatized several times. Hearst was kidnapped in 1974 by a far-left terrorist group known as the Symbionese Liberation Army. Accounts differ as to what happened after this, with some maintaining that Hearst was a brainwashed prisoner suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. Hearst was captured in September 1975, more than a year after six members of the SLA were killed in a gun battle with police in Los Angeles. Still others claimed that Hearst ended up a willing participant in the group's illegal acts. Hearst was ultimately convicted of bank robbery and did serve jail time. She was released early from prison and had her case pardoned by former President Bill Clinton in 2001. Her sentence was first commuted by President Carter and she was later pardoned by President Clinton. The Tate LaBianca killings. The crimes of the Manson family go far beyond the world of headline news. They captured the zeitgeist of the era. A wannabe musician, Manson thought the Beatles song, Helter Skelter, was an anthem to Armageddon. This was the come down period of a post free love America, a time when rising pessimism, an unpopular war in Vietnam, and an overall mistrust of institution created an unfortunate backdrop for the Tate LaBianca murders. Charles Manson himself may not have directly involved himself with these brutal slayings. Manson ordered his longtime lieutenant, Tex Watson, and two of his lovers, Susan Atkins and Patricia Krenwinkel, to break into the Tate Polanski home and kill whoever they found. However, his specter loomed large over those that did commit these crimes, spellbound under Manson's cult of personality. The summer of love felt decades away, and the hippies would not inherit the earth. These were dark times. The body of Sharon Tate is make-believe. Uh, that's make-believe. Make 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 believe. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum art theft. Where is all the art? This is what authorities want to know. Oh, and who exactly committed the heist of the century? The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum was the site of America's biggest art heist back in 1990, when the thieves made their way into this Boston-based museum disguised as police officers. The value of the pieces stolen from the museum is worth a pretty penny, too. How much, you may ask? Hundreds of millions of dollars. When it was over, the thieves made off with 13 objects. Estimated worth 200 to 300 million dollars. The museum is so desperate for information, in fact, that they've offered a cool 10 million dollar reward for any information leading to the art's discovery an unprecedented sum four times higher than any reward ever offered. The mystery of Jean Benet Ramsey. Who could possibly kill a child? This question came up again and again within the media frenzy that followed the death of Jean Benet Ramsey in 1996. The note demands $118,000 and threatens the immediate execution of their daughter. Attention was laid at the feet of Ramsey's parents due to theories that the murder was staged to look as if it came from the outside, when in fact it was alleged that the killer was someone close to Jean Benet. 
And lo and behold, when John Ramsey finds the body, you now have John Ramsey at the crime scene. The Ramseys never escaped the shadow of these accusations, nor have there been any arrests for the killing. It's a tragically depressing example of how justice isn't always done and that killers sometimes get away with their crimes. Will whoever killed Jean Bede Ramsey get away with murder? The Watergate break in. It was one of the most infamous political scandals in the world, a time of reckoning for an American president. The word Watergate actually refers to the Watergate complex, where a group was arrested after botching a break-in of the Democratic National Committee headquarters on June 17, 1972. The subsequent arrests, trials, and news coverage dominated American television sets, and it served to underline what we mentioned earlier about rising pessimism and mistrust surrounding nearly every aspect of American life. We were witnessing the implosion of an American presidency. President Richard Nixon resigned in disgrace in the face of impending impeachment, as it came to light just how involved he was with the break-in. And so we leave with high hopes, in good spirit. The Lindbergh kidnapping. You may be familiar with the term trial of the century, since it's often used to describe high-profile court cases. The press was quick to dub it the crime of the century. But the one following the Lindbergh kidnapping in 1932 and the subsequent media circus fit the description. The details are gruesome. A young toddler is abducted from the prestigious Lindbergh couple, and a ransom note is found. And a ransom note demanding $50,000. Later, the boy's body is also found, and a man is charged and executed. The specifics are not as simple, however, as haphazard police work and a chaotic public response led to everything from destroyed evidence and a potential suspect's self-destruction to the theory that the executed man may have been innocent. Hauptmann is found guilty and sentenced to death. The deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. Speaking of trials of the century, the O.J. Simpson trial is much more recent than the Lindbergh case, but no less troubling or dramatic. They were a very dynamic couple. Here, what might have been an ordinary murder case for any other defendant turned into sensationalized media, complete with larger-than-life personalities. Never mind the fact that the defendant was former football megastar O.J. Simpson, accused of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Nearly everyone involved in this trial became sensationalized to the point of parody, from Judge Lance Ito to Hollywood witnesses like Cato Kalin to lawyers Marsha Clark, Johnny Cochran, and Robert Kardashian. Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187. Jack the Ripper. Our next entry may be the oldest on this list, but its lasting influence is no less infamous. The crimes of Jack the Ripper remain one of history's best-known cold cases, a gruesome collection of killings that continue to obsess true crime buffs to this day. She had been disemboweled. Jack the Ripper's reign of terror had begun. It's the Ripper's methods that possibly made his crime so influential to the media that loved to cover his every move. The brutality and surgical precision of the killer's knife made life in Victorian England perilous, particularly for those working the sex trade. And the fact that his victims were prostitutes meant they would take him to the very places where they knew that they were safe. At this point, the identity of the Ripper will probably never be uncovered with any certainty but his legacy as one of history's most violent serial killers remains secure. Even with a corpse, an approximate time of death, and knowledge of the weapon, the police had little to work with. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The JFK Assassination it's morbidly fitting that we bookend this list with young men cut down in their prime, before the true scope of what they could have done came to light. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. Still, just as Martin Luther King's legacy remains with us, so too does John F. Kennedy's as one of America's most unique and well-known presidents. He would never grow older than this image, forever frozen on this Dallas day. Kennedy's time in office was not without scrutiny, 
but the manner of his death has arguably been poured over with more detail than perhaps any crime in history. Conjecture and theories persist to this day as to whether or not Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. We will likely never know the whole truth. There are lots of theories. It was Castro, the Mafia, the Soviets, the CIA, you name it. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.